Hey Paul, thank you for giving me another match here. And it is very interesting reading your email and then watching the match. I'm almost seeing it the other way around a little bit, that you are going too much for stuff, going for it at the beginning of the match and then you settled in a little bit more. And this is what I wanna draw your attention to. So we have these clusters here. I'm just strictly going with, with that right now. Um, and if I'm pointing at them and we look at the explanation, what they are, it to me becomes very clearly that, you're hadn't, that you hadn't settled in yet, basically. So you are going for some balls that, that are too soon to risk much on. So I'm just gonna run through this here, what the explanations of. Paul hits a forehand out. Paul serves in the net, double faults in the net. Paul hits a forehand out. So there's one whole game gone right away. Paul hits a uh, forehand out. Yes, okay, fine, opponent hits a winner once in a while, but hits a backhand out, serves out, hits a volley out, and then hits a backhand out. So very quickly in the beginning of the match, you're losing whole chunks of points. And then you settle down a little bit more. So the streaks basically where you are not committing a whole lot of errors become longer and longer. And that is when you also play longer points. And the same is true then if we look at the beginning of the second set. Again, that's a cluster, a little bit better here, but then cluster here, cluster there. So that is to my mind what we want to cut out. This, these kind of little clusters of three, four balls in a row, and they can have different different reasons. Maybe you weren't quite uh, warmed up here yet. You hadn't settled in yet. Uh, at the beginning of a second set, a lot of times, especially if you won the first set, it's an, ah, whew, you know, I can say, you know, sit back a little bit and, oh, no, wait, I can't do that. So I have to actually, you know, keep building here again or keep coming back. So that is really interesting to me. And when we now look at the points, you do see that quite a bunch of them are very, very fast. So I just want to highlight a few. And those are the things um, that might be tactical awareness. And or when you're thinking you're coming in, you want to come in, that you're going for too much on the mid-court balls here. Because you have a couple of later points then where you have the exact same balls in short court, but you're making a totally different choice. And that forces this guy here to have to actually pass you. And you're right, he did pretty well. But to my mind, you didn't stop coming in in the later stages of the sets. You just picked your time better and you were a little bit more cautious with the approach shot. So let's look at some of the points. So I'm gonna show you four points and they're all early in the, the match and they are very short. So to me, again, a little uh, hectic or just rushing the point a little too much. So let's look at them. And they're just also a little wild to be honest. So on this one, I love this is a really good second ball and this yilks. So if we look at this, you were, yeah, somewhere in no man's land and I'm not sure what you were planning to do with that ball. To me, it was short enough to hit that as an approach shot and come in and you could have gone either way, but that's just um, a ball without any kind of differentiation, I wanna say. So that's not a very well thought out point and those are the ones that can be exploited, right? Because all of a sudden he jumps up in the score and the next one is very, very similar. It's just wanting too much too soon in the point. So that was a little wild. And then if we look at the next one, again, we're very early in the set. So even more of an unfortunate point uh, to go for these wilder points. It looks like you kind of hit it uh, a little bit off the frame there. But again, what were you planning to do with that ball? 
And this here is the second ball. It's not a rally ball. It's not, oh, I'm gonna you know, structure the point. And you had a bunch of those early on in the sets and that's why he's kind of running away with the score. And that is where I'm kind of finding it very interesting because you said you were kind of not going for it because you had played so much doubles. I see that as going for it because there's no structure in the point. So that's a, to me a very interesting kind of uh, difference in perception, I wanna say. What I do like though then is that you started to play longer points and you're winning the vast majority there. And it gives you also more time to structure your points better, to get better balls in short court. So when you're getting past the first four balls, and I set the filter in here, it's basically forced errors, errors that you're making him commit because you're keeping the ball in play. We're looking at your sweet spot here between five and eight shots. So that's really one serve plus the next ball off the serve and one more, or it's the making the return, then one more ball after the return plus one more ball. If we look at this here, adding the three to four shot rally, yeah, you're adding four more. And then here, if we go to five, um, over eight, there's fewer rallies in the whole match, but the vast majority that you're forcing errors on is not on the quote unquote quick points, it's on the longer rallies. And that is something I think that you want to Think about, you can still go for it, but you want to structure the point a little bit more. So let's look at a few points where you did that really well. Not going crazy on the first two balls. That one, you got stuck a little bit in no man's land. And here again, with that approach shot, don't have to do much more than that, but you keep in more than two of your own balls in play. And at your level, that really is decisive for the matches. And I'm thinking making that adjustment then is a really smart thing to do. So again, when you said like you were going for it a little bit more, hmm, I'm seeing you actually be a little bit more conservative in the later parts of the sets. And that's where you turn the match around. And now let's talk about the serves. Having a great powerful serve, of course, is kind of cool, but I wouldn't dismiss that you're having so much success with the quote unquote, slicier, weaker, slower second serve. A couple of things, you're lefty. Only seven to 12%, I think, of the population are left-handers. I don't know what the number exactly is in tennis, but that just means that as right-handers, we don't get to return your serve as much. So that's one thing. Number two, people are not training or working on returns enough anyways. And what you then also have as a little bit of a, yeah, I almost want to say uh, anomaly is that you have the proper grip. You have a continental grip. And a lot of times in 3-0, 3-5, up to 4-0, it fiddles, fizzles out at 4-5. You don't get to be 4-5 uh, for the most part in men's with the wrong grip. People have that frying pan grip. So the ball basically when they're hitting, doesn't matter what the pace is, it comes very straight to them. And that is basically when you're hitting your serve a little flatter, a little harder. That is something that they see all day. But a slower serve, maybe even a little shorter and spin, that is something that breaks their necks. So yes, do you want to work on your first serve, flatter serve? Yes, because it makes it even more valuable that you then have a quote unquote weaker second serve or spinnier second serve. But I would, I would work on making the flat serve the surprise so that you do hit the majority of the serves like this one here. You're not necessarily winning the point outright, but you're setting up a really good second shot. And you see how he has to move forward, still underestimated, still misjudges it. And then he has to kind of run into the net because he's totally in no man's land. 
And we're seeing the exact same thing here because he doesn't know really what to do. And you saw how that ball is basically bouncing. It's rather short. So theoretically that's something, oh yeah, great, I can step in. But then it veers away from him. And we just don't see that as right-handers often enough. I would absolutely keep that in your repertoire and actually make that your routine serve and then throw some of the faster ones in. And I think you should be really, really good with that.